Hey guys, uh, look at this big boy here. It's a super robot. Uh, as you guys may know, super robots, this sort of thing, not really particularly usually my style, not my taste, but this is the Gunbuster kit here. It's a big, massive kit, and this is from Aoshima. And this one is actually literally from Aoshima. They sent this to me directly, so thank you. Aoshima, love you guys. Uh, they also sent me the Mecha Godzilla kit, which I reviewed a little while back as well too. So really cool, really enjoyed that kit, and this one should be pretty awesome as well. It's in like kind of the same size big box, and so I think this is a new version of the Gunbuster kit that's just come out. So I'm really looking forward to just seeing what's like. As you guys know, I love to build uh, something different every now and then. This certainly is going to be very different. This is a one to one thousand scale kit from Aoshima's X line. So the same line again as the. Uh, Mecha Godzilla kit and some of the other mecha kits that they put out. So actually looking at the side here, interesting to note that apparently Gunbuster is actually a property of Gainax and Bandai Visual, but this model is of course not produced by Bandai. So let's take a look at this massive vertical style box art here. So you got very tall box art with the Gunbuster ripping its mecha heart out and punching with it. So uh, yeah, th again this is a, not a series that I'm familiar with, so I watched a couple of clips <laughs> on YouTube of like some battle scenes and that's really all that I that I know about this really. On the side of the box here you can see a couple of poses there, big standing looking powerful pose there, posing with those big massive axes, posing with his mecha heart ripped out of his mecha chest, and then over here you can see what all is included. So you have all of those uh, hand options, the different option parts for the chest, the double ended battle axes, you got some like big giant baseball bat looking things, and then all those metal rods which I think come out of the arms and legs. Then over here, all in Japanese, we got some information about the Gunbuster there. And then around on the other side, nothing really much to see here, so let's just get it cracked open. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. So in here, we have got... Twenty bags of runners, one more bag with some foil stickers, and our big old instruction manual here. So on the front of the instruction manual, just the same box art there once again. Really beautiful uh, painted artwork here for this. That looks really nice. So I wonder if it says who the artist is for that. Uh, not that I can see, but it's probably on the box or something in Japanese. So. Anyway, uh, here is the seal and color guide. So pretty basic color scheme. It's in this kind of like light purplish lavender kind of color with some yellow and red bits around on there. So you can see that on the front, uh, back, side, and side. Uh, let's go back up here to the front of the manual. And at the front where we usually would have a parts list, it looks like we're just starting off right with the construction. So I think our parts list is here at the back. Yep, here's that. So here's our parts list. And you can see there's on a couple of these runners, there are going to be a lot of parts that are not going to be used, which I think are from the first version. I think this is the second version of this kit. So maybe that's why we're not using some of those. Those are going to be uh, different parts. And then here is the color guide. So there's some reference images there for you to see about the colors. Uh, separate from what the illustrations showed there on the back, I guess, but uh, all in between just gonna be all the construction of the kit So it should be you know, relatively straightforward It's just a big giant mecha and we've got some bits here how to use some of these option parts and everything So I will go through that later on. Let's just get into the runners All right, so then here is the big sheet of foil stickers we've got for this There's some color correcting stickers a couple of blue ones mostly all for these orange bits No water slides included with this although I don't think that this is a, a design that necessarily would have like a lot of markings necessarily on it. We got two of this polycap runner here that are specifically for this kit. It says 1 1000 Gunbuster, so you got these polycaps here in black, two of those. Then we got a few parts that are just already cut off here. These are for like the mecha heart parts. You got a couple different options for that, for like how far you want it basically to be separated away from the body. And these are in a softer, kind of rubbery plastic, it seems like. So those will be able to be like moved around basically in the hand. Alright, so here is runner A getting into some of that dark bluish purplish kind of part for like the main color of the kit. We got two of this A runner. It's more of that here on runner B as well. We've got two of this B runner also, and I just want to show you guys this part here. So when I pulled this runner out, this poked me, there's little spikes on the bottom. I think these are like the tank treads that go on the bottom, and so you got like spiked versions of those. And they're really super sharp, so you got some really sharp detail 
on some of these parts. Runner C here are gonna be some of our larger armor panels for the kit. And Runner D, some more armor pieces in that dark bluish purplish color. Runner E is getting into like some internal kind of parts here. This is in a dark gray color, we've got two of these. And some more of that here on Runner F as well. Runner G is gonna be some of our red parts here for the kit, and just kind of a basically standard red, kind of straight up red color. And then Runner H is going to be some orange parts for the kit, which looks pretty nice. And then Runner I is just our one piece here in yellow for the V fin, or I guess it's kind of more of a W fin on the front of the head anyway. And again, really super sharp, fine detail on the edge of that. So be really careful with this part not to damage this before you get it on the kit. And then Runner J is this tiny little part here. Again, I'm gonna guess probably for there in the head, I guess, or for maybe the mono eye. And Runner K is an interesting one. This is in some dark gray ABS plastic for some more joints and, and things like that, internal pieces. We've got two of this K runner, but then we've also got two more of the K runner in a darker color gray. So I'm not exactly sure what the reason for that is quite yet, but uh, I guess we'll find out here shortly. Runner L is some more joint parts and stuff in a dark, dark gray. And then Runner M is basically a bunch of hand parts and you can get a good sense of the size of this. It's gonna be pretty big with those big massive hands and they also look really nicely detailed as well too. So these should be pretty nice. Runner N here in dark gray, we've got two of these again for all the rods that come out of the arms and legs. And then Runner O is the same thing, but a little bit different runner here for these. We got two of the O runner as well. So this will give you all of those rods to cut out and clean up. Runner P here for the internal parts of the chest in dark red, looking very nice, lots of detail there. And then Runner Q here in a dark gunmetal kind of metallic color for like basically the rib cage here. Also you have the intact and the broken version. Runner S is some new hand parts as well as Runner T here. So I'm guessing these are additions to this version of the kit that the original version didn't have because the whole ripping out the heart thing is something that's new to this version of the kit. So I'm guessing that this is what this this hand is for, and these other hands, I guess, are just some other new hands added with this version of the kit here. Runner U, also in this dark metallic gunmetal color here, parts for the axe, you got two of those. And then you've got the big axe blades, as well as the metal baseball bat here on this kind of molded silver runner, and we've got two of these also. And then the last few bits here are gonna be Runner W for a few more parts here in orange. Runner X for a few more parts here in dark blue. And what these look like they are it actually is some parts to make it so like the, where it's got its arms folded across the chest. This is actually, you'll actually build the arms like that so that they're folded so it won't be like actual separate parts. Anyway, I'll show that to you guys in the review. And then finally, Runner Y is this little, tiny little mecha. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but I'm guessing maybe some sort of like little enemy suit or something maybe that goes with this. But there you go, a little tiny mecha guy. So there you go, man, there's a lot of stuff in here and it looks really cool. A lot of great detail and lots of option parts. So like if you're a fan of the anime, uh, this seems like it's gonna be great. I mean, to be able to recreate basically everything from the anime. So it should be very cool. I'm gonna get this all built up and then we'll see how it looks, guys. All right, so here he is all put together and in the Gainax pose, as you guys informed me, this pose is called uh, during the live stream build of this. The live stream build took quite a while and that's not necessarily because this kit has a ton of parts or is a super complex build. It's just that it's a very odd build. So just, it's not something that I was very familiar with, like a typical Bandai kit or something. I have an idea of how everything is gonna go together pretty well. This is very different. There were some fitting issues, some polycap issues uh, fitting well, some parts just fitting together kind of tightly here and there so uh, you'll see that and there's probably some gonna be some loose bits and things that'll fall apart a little bit during the review best to just keep in mind this is not Bandai a kit it's not gonna be of the same you know expectation of quality that we have from Bandai it's a little bit more along the lines of a traditional model kit that's not really meant to be moved around and played with a bunch one that's kind of just meant to be painted up and built up as a more traditional model. So it's important to keep that in mind that you will probably end up wanting to glue a few pieces here and there on this, you know, might have to do a little bit of sanding modification, just some parts just to make them fit a little bit nicer and things like that just to really make this kit work the best. But even as it is here, just straight out the box, it is pretty nice. So let's go ahead and have a look. And so the cool thing too about this pose is that these arms, as you can maybe tell, this whole section of the front of the arms is actually all kind of molded together as one section. So rather than actually crossing the arms across each other, which would be kind of hard to actually do in a pose, you just build this whole other section like this with this all just kind of fixed in place like that to recreate the pose. So it's a really cool, interesting idea on how to do that. But of course we do just have the regular forearms, which will then just plug back onto there uh, like that. And so while we're here, before we get into the rest of the accessories, then let's just go through some of the articulation. Now the head, as you notice, is very sharp. These points on here are super duper, super duper sharp. 
Be very careful with that, no, not to hurt yourself and also not to damage those parts. So the head will go up, as you can see this whole section here can actually lift up and down like that, this whole top of the torso. The head is on a ball joint and it will move around a little bit, but ultimately you can see you can get the head up to about there like that and then point it down all the way down in there like that. So you'll see this is an orange sticker on there, orange sticker on here on the chest, on these parts up on the shoulders, on the lower part of the forearm, the upper part is the uh, actual orange piece, actual orange piece here on the top of the leg, then stickers all the way around the bottom here, actual orange piece on here, but then dark blue stickers on the bottom of there. The stickers overall on this case, especially these ones that wrap around the rounded areas are pretty crap. As you see, they don't fit on there super well. They're kind of wrinkled, don't really look good. So from a distance, it's kind of okay, but up close, the stickers aren't really gonna be looking good. In the stomach section, we have a little bit of forward and back bend here as well, which is pretty good. And then side to side also, you can bend that there pretty nicely. Around here on its kind of backpack, these flaps down below can move a little bit there also, but I find as soon as you move them, they kind of pop out very easily. And when that happens, you kind of have to take off this part and put that back in there just because that poly cap is kind of tight. And again, sticker wrapping around there for that orange bit on that. Then moving into the shoulders, so you have some back movement like that there for the shoulders. And this whole section can also move out to the side and then that can like uh, come across the front of the chest there like that for that's what, how you need to move that in order to bring the arms across the chest. So that movement there, that shoulder joint is pretty nice and you kind of have to tuck that back into place there and I kind of messed up my sticker on the front of there a little bit in the process, but it's all good. This whole part on the top of the shoulders is plugged on there separately. It's not actually connected to the arm. The arm is separate, so the arm will rotate in there separately. The arm can come out to the side. They're kind of between these kind of fins a little bit, really only I guess like up to there. Can't really get it up any higher because this shoulder part's kind of in the way. These lower flaps, as you can see, they're just kind of resting there loosely. They can be tucked up into place. You need to kind of push them up and they'll click into place and they'll stay there. But then as soon as you touch it wrong, it'll come out again like that. So just make sure you tuck it up into there and then be careful not to touch that and it'll stay in place like that. On the inside of the shoulders, let me show this to you. That panel opens up and then you've got your little tiny mini baseball bat and axe stored up in here, which I guess is like where the weapons are stored. And then we've got the full size versions of those we'll see in a minute, but we've got the little mini ones, or I guess the stored versions of those, I guess how they look when they're stored up there in the shoulder in that side. Around here on the other side is just looks like some fabric stored and we're up in there, which I think is supposed to be like the defensive cape that it pulls out and wraps around itself uh, for defense, but then that's just stored up there in the shoulder. I suppose on that side. So just then getting back to the arms, you have some rotation here below the bicep and then just the joint you'll notice here, the elbow joint is pretty weak. You think, oh, it's like not even 90 degrees, but it actually has a really cool gimmick here in that that will actually pull down out of there and then that will reveal the full double joint that then you can utilize for a really nice full elbow bend here. This bicep section of this kit is a little bit touchy and to kind of be careful, it kind of falls apart a little bit easily, but there you go. So you can get a full bend there at the elbow utilizing that double joint really nicely. Also the wrist joint also kind of weak as that just kind of pops off there really easily. So just be careful about that. The hand is actually plugged onto there with the straight peg and the ball joint is here. So the ball joint is gonna be kind of within the wrist. So you can move that around a little bit, but not too much as it does tend to fall off. Now the forearm and legs do also open up, which is gonna be used for the Buster Collider. So we'll see some more about that in a little bit, but there you go, you can see just how those flaps open up. You got some really nice detail up inside there as well. Otherwise you can just close that back up. Let's go ahead and move it down into the lower body then. Now these side skirt sections are on a ball joint, but they can't really move in. As you can see, they do tend to pop off pretty easily as well here too. So those are just on a ball joint, but just kind of basically stuck in there in place. Then you could probably rotate them a little bit for if you need, but the hip joint is on the hip joint that will swing up and down. So you can see it's on a track in there. You can actually bring that down and that'll help you to actually move the leg forward. So move the hip joint down, then bring the leg forward. That'll get that up higher. So you should be able to get a very high kicking pose out of this without too much issue. As for side movement, I think you can really only get it out to like something like that before as you can see the side skirt's starting to look a bit weird and the hip joint's starting to look a bit strange if you have it too far out to the side there. So I think that's sideways rotation there 
uh, movement there for the leg, not really going to be the best option. And you've got some rotation there at the top of the leg and the knee joint works the same like with the elbow joint as it is. It's gonna be kind of weak like that, giving you not even 90 degrees, but just like with the elbow, you can just extend that down out a little bit more and then you get a nice full bend uh, from the double joint there in the knee. This bit here on the side of the leg can also move a little bit, just kind of in and out like that. I don't really know exactly what that does or what that's for, but that moves a little bit. And the ankle will move forward and back, side to side, all pretty nicely here as well too. It does seem to be the ankle joint seems a little bit weak, so I've noticed a couple times when I'm just standing up the kit because it's very top heavy, it's got a lot of weight up here and the ankle is a little bit weak. It does seem like that it's possible that like, it's gonna fall over a little bit, so you might wanna do a little bit to tighten up the ankle ball joint a little bit on there. I realize I just said a little bit like five times in a row, but uh, the leg also does, of course, open up here as well for, again, the Buster Collider, which we'll see here in just a moment. But before we move on to the rest of the accessories, I just want to point out a couple of seam lines here. You have a seam line on this part, the top half of the thigh, you have a little bit of a seam line there. Around here on the backpack, these parts, you'll have a seam line down the middle of there, and then on on the top of the chest, those kind of uh, hose, like square hose part that goes across the top of the chest there, you have a seam line on those parts as well too. But otherwise, that's really kind of about it as far as seam lines. On some of the different hand options, you have some kind of seam lines on there. But let's go ahead and take a look at these because you've got quite a few different hand options with this. So on the kit there, you saw we've got the closed fists. You also have versions of the hands with the missiles coming out of the fingertips there. So you will have to paint those. Obviously, they're not in their correct colors. I think they're supposed to be white. Uh, but you can paint those up so it looks like he's shooting missiles out of his fingers. You have the holding hands, which are going to be used for either the axe or the bat weapons when you're holding those in the hands. We have the open extended finger hands, open expressive hands here, which will be great for the uh, Buster Collider accessories. We have just kind of regular resting open hands for just kind of having those down, like not really doing anything. I guess you could have these holding on to something like sort of secondarily. But then we have the specific hand for holding on to the mecha heart out the chest. So once you pull that out, this is the hand you're gonna use for holding on to that. We have this tiny little guy, which is another little tiny mecha oh, and his little backpack on that, just a small thing. It's nicely detailed, but it's just this simple little thing. For underneath the feet, you have these optional parts for changing these out for the kicking attack with these uh, kind of really sharp pointy bits coming out of the feet for doing that so you swap those out these also are very sharp too so be careful with those and we've got an optional part here for this back of the waist section that center part you can swap out for this one which will give you this hard point for plugging that onto an action base but alternatively up underneath there you have this little cap which can come off which I'll have to use my knife to get that off there but you can pop that off and then you've got another hard point here for plugging that onto an action base in kind of the normal position up underneath the waist then we've got our massive axe weapons you got two of these these and they do have like a separate part for like the silver part it's like one piece on this side but on this side there's a piece that fits inside of there so you will have like a little bit of a seam line on the inside of that and then also a seam line all the way down the middle of the darker gun metal you also have a seam line between that and these can be combined you have this connection piece you can use plug those together in the center to make this big massive long double-ended axe blade which will be taller than the main figure or main kit itself you can see much taller and then also our baseball bats which again you'll have a seam line all the way down the middle of those just to have sandwiched together for these and they're just in this plain silver so you might want to definitely do some detail painting on these to make them a little bit more color separated but pretty comical it has these gigantic baseball bats then you have all your Buster Collider parts. So there's uh, four sets of these for each limb. So you'll have eight for the arms and eight for the legs. And they are slightly different. The ones for the legs are a little bit longer. The ones for the arms are a little bit shorter in comparison, as you can see there. So just make sure you're keeping them straight, which ones are which. These work pretty simply just by opening up the sections on the arms and legs, plug this up into there like that. And I'll go ahead and put in the rest and show you guys what those look like in action here in just a moment. Final accessory is going to be our optional parts here for the chest. So you got this one with the kind of rib cage intact and this one with the broken rib cage, which you'll use with your kind of soft rubbery heart parts that you pull out here. So you've got two options for those, whether you want to have it closer or farther away from the chest. Depending on how you're going to want to pose this, you can use whichever version of this. If you're holding it kind of close, you can use this one where it's closer. If you're holding it a little bit farther away, you can use this where it's a little bit farther away and then these just plug into the front of the chest here. And because it's soft rubber, I feel like it doesn't plug in there really super securely. So if you're gonna wanna display it like this, I would uh, recommend probably using a little bit of super glue or something on that just to make sure that those are gonna stay in place. And then you'll attach this other one into that dedicated hand for that and then you got your 
hearts coming out of the chest there. So pretty cool gimmick, which we'll see all that in action now. And then also just real quick, here's a look at a size comparison to your standard 1-100 scale Gundam. This is the RX-72 Verkaw there, Master Grade kit. And you can see they're gonna be pretty similar to the Gun Buster, obviously being a little bit higher in head height and a lot higher with those massive tall shoulders. But again, quite the different scale as the Gundam is in 1-100 scale, the Gun Buster is in 1-1000 scale. But I mean, there you have it guys. So for the rest of this review, we'll just take a look at some different poses with all the different accessories and option parts and stuff that you have here. I'll try to show off everything here to you guys because you do have a lot. So basically what this kit comes down to, you know, this is, like I said, a little bit more of a modeler's model kit. It's not something I would necessarily recommend for beginners. It's something you're definitely gonna have to put a little bit of time and effort to into more so than a Bandai kit where you can, you know, you can just snap it up straight out of the kit and you know it's perfectly good to go so it's going to take a little bit more effort uh, definitely the stickers are pretty crap on this uh, it's got a couple of seam lines here and there the articulation overall i think is pretty good actually but you've got some loose parts that'll just kind of be giving you a headache while you're trying to pose the kit so you'll definitely need to use some glue on a few parts here and there uh, but i think those sort of like kind of half negative points not really that negative points not really that bad uh, those somewhat negative points compared to the positive points of this just being a, such a really cool unique design and it has all I mean all the different weapon option parts you have the baseball bat the axe the uh, buster collider parts to make that look really super cool the optional chest pieces with the ripping the heart out and the option parts to make the folded arms crossed arms gain axe pose there and then just like Everything you have in here, you have lots of really cool options for how you want to display the kit, especially if you're a fan of this OBA series, I would highly, highly recommend picking up this kit. You know, if you have a, if you have a particular scene or something from the anime, uh, chances are you'll be able to pull it off because you have so much included with this. Now, I'm sure there's probably maybe one or two things maybe that could have also been included that weren't included, but I think you have a lot in here to work with. So I think it's a pretty awesome kit and it's a little bit pricey, but it's pretty a big kit too. So I think you'd definitely be getting your money's worth if you decide to pick up this one. So if you guys have any other further questions or comments about this, do feel free, of course, to leave those down below. Again, thank you to Aoshima for sending me this to check out. And thank you as always to USA Gundam Store for making it all possible as well too, guys. So check the link down to USA Gundam Store. You know, at the moment, uh, we don't have this up yet on the site, but uh, we should be getting this in a TSA Gundam store in the pretty near future, so just stay tuned for there. And you can save 10% off this and everything there on the website using my coupon code ZACHORELIUS10, so check that as always in the video description down below. So hope the video was helpful, guys. Thank you so much for all your support, whether it be commenting, liking, subscribing, all of that's greatly appreciated. Till next time, hope you all are having a great day. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.